yeah aditya is the call being recorded at your end yes sir okay great actually it's not updating at my end so i just got confused okay so i hope this is getting recorded okay yeah it is getting recorded now okay so i'll share my screen now so children let's get ready because now we'll be starting up with a very uh, you know very important chapter which will form the basis of entire science like especially the physics portion uh, though this calculation calculative part the basics we'll study today will be applied to chemistry as well so i request everyone to pay extra attention towards the topics that we'll be studying today okay so as you all remember in the previous class we did the living organisms characteristics and habitats right where we studied about the habitats and you know various characteristics of uh, living organisms okay so that was the previous unit uh, and that was from biology part today we have a new unit with us which was to which was supposed to be taken last day but we could not due to the constraints in time today we have the new unit motion and measurement of distances motion and measurements of distances and a uh, uh, small update it's not session 5 it's session 8 today okay so i'm sorry this ppt has been made wrongly okay no issues now like we we'll, we are starting with motion and measurement of distances what is motion when anything around us moves when anything around moves uh, we usually term it as motion right for example if a car in front of me okay so just pardon me for my drawing skills again okay yeah suppose it to be a car and if this car is moving ahead like this so we will say yes the car is moving but if this car stops if this car just stops then we will say yes the car is not moving right is that the motion any inputs from aditya hello am i audible no sir you i can listen you sir okay can you see the screen yes sir yeah so uh, could you uh, get an idea like what is motion if anything is moving we usually term it as yes the body is in motion right yes sir now but actually this is an incomplete definition this is incomplete let's complete it on a jam board i will just change my screen okay there i will explain you in more detail actually there is a space constraint here so we'll move to a jam board now okay so i hope you can see it aditya yes can sir. yeah very good so i'll just move to a fresh page yeah so now basically i want to draw your attention towards motion what is motion basically for example if i say i am standing here and another person is standing here with me we all we both are standing here okay now we both are at rest we both are at rest now now this person like assume this person to be a this person to be b now now b starts moving b starts moving like he starts walking okay so now what i will see i will see b i'll say b is walking all right so b is in motion with respect to a fine b is in motion with respect to a 
Agreed? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, now again the same scenario. A is standing here. B is walking in this direction. So what will B say? What will B say? That? What will B say? That would be in motion. Who is in motion? B is in motion. Yes, sir. Yeah, you are right. But is A in motion? No, sir. A is not in motion if we are seeing them. Yes, sir. Right. But, but, but A is in motion if B is seeing him. You might have observed this very common phenomenon adjacent to our train. Right. And if this train starts moving and assume you are sitting here, so you will feel you are moving and the train is still. Have you observed it? Like for example, when we travel in a train, when we travel in a train and the train is moving in forward direction, the trees are still at their position, but when we move in the forward direction, it feels like trees are moving in the backward direction. Have you observed this? Yeah. No, sir. I, uh, I feel the opposite. Okay. I'll explain it again. Actually, what happens when you sit in a train? Okay. Assume this to a train. Assume it to be a train. So, uh, do you agree there are trees nearby? Yes, sir. Yeah. There are trees nearby. So, if the train moves in this direction, so and if you are looking out of the window, will you not feel like trees are moving in the opposite direction? Actually, you are not audible to me. Uh, actually, I am not getting your voice clear at my end, but okay, I'll explain it again. Uh, we'll listen to your thoughts when your mic gets fine, right? So I am saying, I am saying that when we move in a train, Hello, it's sir. In... yeah, yeah. Now you're audible. Hello. Oh, sir. Uh, Okay, but not in train. Okay, you have observed it, but where you have observed it? In? Uh -huh. Your voice is not clear, child. You can write it in the chat as well. Like in which vehicle have you observed this phenomena? But have you observed it? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, very good. So you have observed it that whenever we move, Whenever we move, it seems like someone is moving in the opposite direction. Okay, what is this happening? Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like trees are moving in the opposite direction. It can be anything. It can be a train. It can be a car. It can be a bus. It can be a... Uh, even when you know, lights take off on the runway. Uh, now again, I don't know how to draw a plane so well. But... Okay, so a plane also, planes also move very fastly when they have to take off, right? So, 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 then also you will feel that the buildings nearby uh, on the airport are moving in opposite direction when the plane moves in forward direction. So that's a general phenomenon. So this is what I wanted to explain here. Like when, you know, like A was moving, like B was moving. So B will 
you know b will feel b will feel that a is also moving in opposite direction so 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 i just want to explain to you that motion is a what motion is a dependent phenomena or motion is dependent upon the frame of reference dependent phenomena just for the time being dependent phenomena okay like motion depends basically uh, depending upon our vision basically like for example we were looking at both a and b together so b was moving so we were saying okay b is moving a is at uh, is at rest right b is in motion a is at rest but but if we are on frame of reference of b if we uh, you know if we look at perspective of b so a will also be moving but in opposite direction are you getting that for example we are uh, living on earth agreed yes sir earth is moving yes sir but you are standing here you don't feel this motion do you feel it we don't feel it right so we are yeah, yes sir if, if the earth will stop moving then you, uh, we will uh, float to the uh, nah, that's a different thing but earth is moving around sun do we feel that no we don't feel that because we are on earth if i go to moon and stand here and look at earth and you then i will say yes earth is also moving and you are also moving okay well i guess this is not uh, you know this is getting a bit beyond the uh, you know the reach of syllabus for us so let's get back to the slides it was just like an explanatory part it's not necessary it's not even part of our syllabus i was just bringing up as an extra thing because you know uh, like as i always say you are here at suvi labs you deserve something extra which your school friends are not getting right so yeah yeah so okay so we are basically discussing about motion and measurement of distance measurement of distance okay so what is distance distance is like distance is between two points right if i talk about two points if i talk about two cities say it as delhi and mumbai so if i assume their distance the difference between the locations the path difference is almost like say for an example 2000 kilometers do we say it right we call it as 2000 kilometers for example so that is the distance there is some distance between delhi and mumbai and measurement of that distance is the measurement of distances right and now when we measure that we express it by a certain quantity and that quantity like we are here saying it as 2000 kilometers all right that's the thing like that was just the basic uh, introduction to the chapter now we shall move into the details now measurement now 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 like as i said whenever we measure distances whenever we measure distance so now after i measure it i need to tell someone else also yes i have measured it for example like see here in this diagram uh, assume there is a table okay just assume this to be a table now i want to measure this length this length so i can bring a ruler a ruler like this right so i'll just place the ruler but it is very small it cannot measure the entire length of the table so what i will do i'll bring a bigger ruler something like this right but this is also small now what i will do i will place my ruler on the table and i will note the distance which is okay that is this is 30 centimeters now for example if i measured from here to here can you see me clearly because my blur effect was on so i hope i am visible but okay now i'll remove it so yeah i'll be better visible okay at the time i visible to you okay so like this is my ruler but this is also small as compared to the length of the table so now what I will do, I will place my ruler along the length of the table and assume, uh, okay, I will take the reading which is 30 centimeters. Now, assume this to be the edge. 
of the table uh, corner not edge corner so from this corner i'll place my scale and now here this side i'll just twist i'll just turn the side of the ruler and take another 30 cm so from here to here my distance is here to here my distance is 60 cm right yes sir isn't it easy yes sir are you getting my point sure na pakka very sure like i had a scale of 30 cm but my table is too big so what i will do i will take multiple measurements using the same scale have you ever done this yes sir yes no is it it uh, interesting like we can uh, you can try it at, our, at your home as well like you can just uh, uh, like measure anything like there are many measuring devices not just the scales we have measuring tapes as well which are used to measure you know while uh, cutting the piece of clothes uh, usually tailors and all use that so that's another measuring device we have scales now for example if we don't have scale and i need to measure the length so what i will do i'll use my hand this is known as hand span the difference between the thumb tip to any of the fingertip you want to take any that's all up to your choice if i am taking this as my hand span here to here this one so i'll measure the table like with using my okay i'll use a cardboard so that i can explain okay let's take a register okay assume this to be a table okay now this is my table now what i will do i'll take my hand i'll place here measure one hand span now from here i will keep my thumb here now it's almost 1.5 hand span but okay it's not possible so i will take a smaller span assume this to be this to this uh like this one hand span two hand span some more than two are you getting my point yes sir if i take a small ruler like this so i'll just place my ruler like this something like this then from this point i will place it again then from this point i will place again to take that small distance so i will get the total distance that's the method of measurement basically so similarly it has been mentioned here in this slide as well that we can measure longer lengths using smaller distances now 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 very important for example when you are measuring it and it took you six spans six spans like uh, like you were taking the hand spans and it took you six spans to cover the entire table for example so in this six spans in this six spans we call six as the magnitude and spans as the unit have you ever ever heard of these terms for example if i say 10 centimeters so 10 is the magnitude and centimeter is the unit have you heard of these terms aditya yes sir yeah very good so these are the terms that we need to know first one is the okay and this collectively is known as a quantity a quantity so a quantity has magnitude and unit okay so can you tell me what is the magnitude in this term In one kilometer, magnitude is one. A thousand. No, no, no. One, one, one is the unit. No, uh, one is the magnitude, and kilometer is the unit. It would have been so, thousand. Magnitude. Magnitude means uh, it is looking like magnet. No, 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 no. It's like it's the language like. But uh, magnet is a different thing and magnitude is a different thing. Magnet you might have seen, uh, north, south poles and that's another thing. And magnitude is an English term used to refer the amount of something present in a quantity, right? So that is nothing but the magnitude. And if I talk about one kilometers, so in one kilometer, one is the magnitude and kilometer is the unit. You said thousand, your answer was not wrong. If this kilometer is converted to meters, then thousand is the magnitude and meter is the unit. Okay, we will study conversions again in the coming slides. I'll explain it to you in more details. But for now, but for now, uh, like if someone asks you,
for example um like what is the magnitude in 101.6 kilograms so what's the magnitude here hello yes sir what's the magnitude here in 101.6 kilograms sir 101.6 very good this is the magnitude and the unit is kilograms very good you have understood the topic very well very good so 101.6 is magnitude and kilogram is the unit very good so now we'll move to the next slide yeah standard units for measurements so like basically we are measuring distances so we will use uh, like basically our goal is to study units of distance mainly okay before that there are there is another thing that i want to take draw your attention towards first is the si system of units you know this like for example you know like now we were just discussing about a hand span but my hand is comparatively bigger than your hand right agreed yes sir now for example if you measure the length of the table as 10 spans but when i will measure it my measurement will be less than your spans so we will have to say okay if we measure this table so it would be 10 spans of aditya's hand and for example 6 spans of dev's hand like for example my uh, for my name is dev so uh, it will be 6 spans of my dev's hand and 10 spans of aditya's hand hand but allah like us there are uh, millions of people billions of people in this world when they will measure so there will be millions and billions of units right so to generalize this thing a syst international system was you know uh, fixed like for example the full world will follow a single system of measurement which was termed as system de internationale which is i guess a french word uh, but we can call it as international system as si system uh, of units and in this si units three units were uh, considered as the main units it was like meter for distance kilogram for mm, your weight and uh, not weight mass and seconds for time we also call it as mks system of units okay well this is again not needed for the time being we just need to know meter meter is the si unit of si unit of distance yes sir right do you know this Yes, yeah very good apart from meter we have other uh, units for distance as well mainly centimeter millimeter kilometer there is another decimeter okay so now i'll teach these things on the jam board they were will do numericals as well so uh, i request you to get a pen and a copy so that you know like a notebook where you can solve the questions which i give and we will discuss them all together okay i'll share the jam board now sir i do not have any any copy uh any notebook any rough page okay no issues i'll be solving it you can try it on you know like you can do some mindly calculations so that we can just you know move on with the flow okay so like we are studying about distances SI unit is SI unit is meter. Other subordinate units that we are studying: centimeter, kilometer, and millimeter. Now, conversion is very important. Conversion very important. Just have a look. Centimeter. Okay, so I'll just draw a table. Millimeter. is smallest from millimeter we go to centimeter from centimeter we go to meter from meter we go to kilometer okay now since this is a very big unit 1 kilometer equals to 1000 meters first conversion now we have moved from kilometers to meters 1 meter equals to okay aditya it's a very urgent call for me 
I'll have to take a small pause. Actually, it's an emergency call. Okay, I hope you don't mind. No, sir. Just a moment, okay? I'll be back. Okay, very sorry, Aditya. Actually, you know, uh, they, it was an emergency call, so I had to take it. Otherwise, I would not have. Very sorry for that. Okay, like I have told, told you now about, like we can convert one kilometers to uh, meters. We can convert meters to centimeters now. How will we do so? Like, you know, one meter contains 100 centimeters and one centimeter will contain 10 millimeters. So you can see there is a gradual decrease in the, you know, amount that is uh, being uh, like it's here, like one kilometer has been converted into thousand meters. One meter is converted into hundred centimeters and one centimeter is converted to 10 meters. Is this clear? You know, this is very, very important. These uh, we will use uh, these conversions we'll use in the numericals. Now I will be taking up. So uh, hello. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, were these uh, conversions clear to you? Yes, sir. Yeah, like as I said now, like there are three conversions that we need to study. Kilometers to meter, meter to centimeter and centimeter to millimeter. Yes, sir. Fine. That's the thing. Now, very important. Now, question one. We'll solve question one. Now, question one says, one kilometer to x yeah, dash centimeter. Now, if someone says me convert like Delhi to Bombay distance is distance given to me is uh, for example 10 kilometers. Though it is imaginary, take it as imaginary. And they ask me convert it to centimeters convert it to centimeters. So I said, okay, all right, I'll convert it. But I know I can convert kilometers to meters and from meters, I'll go to centimeter. I'll go with this flow. So for this, I take okay, I have 10 kilometers. Looking at this table, one kilometer equals to thousand meters. I know that. So 10 kilometers will be 10 into thousand meters. Agreed. Yes, and if I want to convert these meters to centimeters, I'll just do 10 into 1000 into meters to centimeter. One meter contains 100 centimeters. So I'll just multiply with 100. And I'll get my answer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 centimeters. Clear? Yes, sir. So the question was 10 kilometers. It is 1000000 zero, 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 zero centimeters. Okay. Now, like you might have observed, okay, one more problem. Convert 10 meters to millimeters. All right. Now I know from meter I can go to centimeter and from centimeter I'll go to millimeter. When we go from meter to centimeter, we multiply by 100. When we go from centimeter to millimeter, we multiply by 10. So it's 10 meters. I'll multiply with 100. I'll get 10, 0, 0 centimeter. Now I'll multiply with 10. I'll get 1, 0, 0, 0 millimeter. Clear? Like it is very simple calculation. I'm not doing anything new, just a simple calculation. So you might have observed whenever we go from kilometer to meter, then from meter to centimeter, and then from centimeter to millimeter, we need to multiply here. Why? Because we are moving from a higher standard of unit to a lower standard, a higher unit to a lower unit. Higher unit is kilometer. Why? Because we are measuring very big distances using kilometers. And we are missing very small unit uh, distances using millimeters. So we are moving from a higher unit to a lower unit. And whenever we move from a higher unit to a lower unit, we multiply. What do we do? We multiply. So when I move from kilometers to millimeter, uh, meters, then I will multiply by 1000. When I will go from meters to centimeter, I will multiply by 100. And when I will go from centimeter to millimeter, I will multiply by 10. Okay, is this clear? This is very important. 
you need to fix it in your mind children because without this we cannot move ahead in the chapter okay clear okay i assume this to be the clarity okay now very important like we have just studied about like we are going from kilometers to meter then from meter to centimeter and from centimeter to millimeter now when we go from kilometer to meter as we have just discussed we multiply by 1000 meter to centimeter we multiply by 100 centimeter to millimeter we multiply by 10 one zero is reducing consecutively but now if someone says me if someone says me go from millimeter to centimeter centimeter to meter and meter to kilometer what to do now so i need to do nothing but now i will divide by 10 i'll divide by 100 i'll divide by 1000 one more problem convert 8000 millimeters to kilometers if we take this problem now i have 8000 millimeter with b i need to go till kilometer in between i have to just go from millimeter to centimeter centimeter to meter and then meter to kilometer we will follow this process okay so when we go from millimeter to centimeter we divide by 10 when we go from centimeter to meter we divide by 100 when we go from meter to kilometer we divide by 1000 okay so now i just have 8000 mm millimeter i will divide by 10 i'll get 800 centimeters then i will divide by 100 i'll get 8 meters and then i will divide by 1000 so do you know this uh, division like if i'm dividing by 1000 so my decimal will be three places ahead so it will be 0.008 kilometers all right is this conversion clear once again i'll write it on the next jam like it's nothing but whenever i am jumping from kilometer okay we are taking a two step process kilometer to meter meter to centimeter centimeter to millimeter okay also i'll just change the color of my pen i am coming from millimeter to centimeter centimeter to meter and then meter to kilometer i am multiplying with 1000 if i am going from kilometer to meter multiply by 100 from meter to centimeter and multiply by 10 for centimeter to millimeter whereas 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 i'll divide by 10 if i have to go from millimeter to centimeter i'll divide by 100 you just see the symmetry how symmetric this process is divide by 100 when we are jumping from centimeter to meter and divide by 1000 if we are jumping from meter to kilometer now i have a problem for all just convert 85 kilometers to millimeter and 85 millimeter to kilometer just two moments like two minutes for all uh, if aditya you are able to try then it's okay otherwise we will continue uh, i'll just solve it in a minute you can try if you have any resources around you okay am i audible because you know sometimes it happens the network get lost yes sir you are audible okay great so uh, did you get this conversion process isn't it easy yes sir yeah it is very easy and you know when you will just practice two or three questions then it will be so clear to you very clear to you uh, no one can just beat you here so it's really easy okay so i hope you might have tried it let's uh, just solve these two problems like firstly i just said 85 kilometers okay let's take a red pen 85 kilometers to i am just saying you to convert it to millimeters right so what we will do we'll just multiply by 1000 first then we'll multiply by 100 and then we will multiply by 10 so my answer will be 85 30 20 10 60 zeros millimeter fine if some now the next problem was 85 mm to kilometers so i have to go from one extreme end to another extreme end so now i will just first divide by 85 divide by 10 then divide by 100 then divide by 1000 for clarity we can just put up brackets here 
okay this already put here uh huh ha this way so like first we'll divide 85 by 10 it would be 8.5 then divide by 100 the point will shift to 0.085 then divide by 1000 so it will be 0.000085 kilometers i hope you know these decimal divisions do you like whenever i divide any number say 57 by 10 so i'll just count from here 10 i'll jump here and put the decimal it would be 5.7 if it was 57 by 100 so i'll start counting zeros there are two zeros so i'll count from here 1 2 place the decimal here it's 0.57 if it is 57 by 1000 it would be how much three zeros 1 2 3 now here is zero right if i say 57 or i say 057 both are same So my answer will be zero point zero five seven. Do you know this? Hello, did you know this? Um, yes, sir. Sure, I can explain it again. If you don't know, otherwise we'll move ahead. Okay, we'll take it once again. For example, there is a number forty-eight. If I want to multiply it with hundred, so nothing but I'll just write forty-eight zero zero. If I want to multiply it with thousand, I'll just write forty-eight three zeros. Now, if someone says me divide it by hundred, so I will say okay, I can divide it very easily. Just like here are two zeros, I'll start counting from here one digit, two digit. Now after two digit, place the decimal, so it will be zero point four eight. If someone says divide by thousand, I'll say okay, I'll divide it by thousand. I'll start counting the digits here. Now, can I say it as zero for eight? If it is forty-eight, just count the three digits eight four zero. Now place the decimal here. I'll get the answer as zero point zero four eight. Okay, so you can just carry out practice at home. It's very simple. Like you can just divide like forty-seven by one two three four. You can just divide seventy-seven by nine. Okay, one zero zero. You can just divide three by ten. You can just divide five by twenty. Okay, how we'll divide five by twenty? Uh, we need ten in the denominator. So I'll just multiply five here, five here. It will be twenty-five by hundred. Now I have two zeros. One should be here. So my answer will be point two five. Okay, that's very simple. Very very simple. But it okay if you don't know also. Uh, you can just practice simple calculations uh, and when you will do ncert problems you will get to know more things so now i'll move to the slides that we have okay a window yeah yeah so like aditya we were just discussing these conversions meter to centimeter centimeter to millimeters and kilometers to meters so we had three conversions meter to okay kilometer to meter meter to centimeter and then centimeter to millimeter and you know it very well when we want to go from kilometer to meter we will multiply by 1000 meter to centimeter multiply by 100 centimeter to millimeter will multiply by 10 not 100 10 okay so let's go ahead isn't it easy it's easy yes it is easy now 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 very important very very important like you know whenever we take measurements we need to take care uh firstly while we are taking measurements it's very important that the scale is perfect for example if scale is broken then no there is no use of that scale right uh we'll take the wrong measurement if the scale is broken now it's very important we need to take care of the parallax now what is parallax for example uh, consider this image i am standing here and i am taking the reading so my eyes will be focusing on this point whereas if i stand at an angle my eyes will focus on a point somewhere here if i am standing here my eyes will focus on somewhere here so when i will stand here i'll retake a reading here if i stand here i take a reading here and if i stand here i take a reading here these are wrong readings my right reading is this one when i am standing just in front of it i should exactly point towards the reading if i am taking an angular reading it will be wrong due to the error known as parallax error 
okay so so we need to take care whenever we take a measurement that we are vigilant enough that we are not taking a wrong uh, reading for example uh, okay these are the steps as mentioned place the scale in contact with the object along its length the scale should be accurately placed for example like we were just yes are you saying something no sir okay like for example this is your table length now if i don't play the place the scale properly like this okay i will just switch to uh yeah so okay should i remove the effects okay yeah like this is my table okay now i'll just place my scale here now if my scale is not placed correctly if i place it something like this so will my reading be correct hello aditya is it visible yes sir the reading will not be correct right if i place the scale like this but if i place it correctly like this my reading will be correct if my scale is not placed properly if i place something like this this and some at angle like this then my reading will be wrong yes sir yes sir i need to place it accurately okay yeah that was the thing now changing this uh, coming to the next point it says make sure scale is not uh, you uh, make you use is not broken scale should not be broken zeros should be clearly visible like i hope the scale is now visible to you can you see the zero marking here okay yeah i hope you can see the zero marking here the scale starts from here for example this zero gets vanished this vanishes here now from where will be the reference point i'll take the measurement i don't have any reference point so my scale is now of no use if zero vanishes if the edge of the scale gets broken from here then what is the use of this part i cannot take any measurement using this scale so it is very important that the device we are using for measurement is correct it's not broken correct position of eye is also important for taking the exact measurement as we have just discussed in the uh, diagram the error is known as parallax error and uh, we should keep our eyes just in front of the point we are measuring on okay yes, that's sir. easy yeah very good now measuring the length of a curved line for example if someone says uh, this is a curved path you need to measure the length now how we will measure this because if i just place my scale on this curved path i cannot measure it hello are you saying something i have a class you have a class yes sir okay okay so it's just five. okay you might be having it from 6 right yes sir okay so i'll just leave you in uh, okay okay so like aditya i will share a feedback form here and a quiz form if you like actually we have not completed the part yet otherwise the quiz Uh, like few quiz questions are not yet covered so we cannot go for it okay so uh, like did you enjoy in the class yes also, sir also like you know i could like i got an emergency call and i am very sorry for that you know actually it was really an emergency call otherwise i would have avoided it uh so you can fill the feedback form and we shall continue it in the next class because you know this this is very important chapter of physics and more explanation and practice of more problems is important here so uh, like also we have a quiz in line but we have not covered the part yet so we cannot go for the quiz so uh, you can fill the feedback form for this class yes sir okay so have you filled it no uh... sir i will fill ha fill it i am here you can fill it easily now actually we are not allowed to you know to leave students they are not allowed to leave unless they fill the uh, actually it's a request basically you are uh, like we are request we request you to fill the feedback form you know because it helps us in our development and maintaining the attendance so that is the reason you can fill and inform me and after informing you can leave the class i will complete the lecture because you know we have to get the complete recordings okay done done very good so now aditya you can leave the class
uh, i'll complete this chapter you can see the recording afterwards or we will discuss the things in the next class before starting the next chapter okay yes sir okay great you can leave if you want or you can just leave before the next class easily you can just listen for few more minutes okay i'll be continuing okay so children wherever we are supposed to measure the length of a curved path so what we will do uh, like we cannot easily measure it using the scales we have because that scales will like you know they are tangent like they'll measure only the straight line distance they cannot measure this curved distance so what we can do is we can just take a thread and place the thread along the path let me just change the color of my pen so that it can be more clear afterwards like i'll just take a thread and place it along this path and whenever when this point comes i'll just pick up my thread just stretch it it will be a straight line now i will measure the distance on my scale so that will give me the total length of the path uh, of path ab as you can see in the in the diagram and i'll get the correct length it's accurate like when like i was in my class 10 we had a topic called topography uh, we had a chapter in geography where we used to measure you know distance between two points on a map using this method uh, like like it's not just with me at class 10 level when you know like people go for higher studies especially in the field of geography they have to work on maps and they usually go for this process of measuring the actually it's very important you know maps are made up to the scale okay so okay you will study these things in detail uh, like in detail i should not say but yeah you will practice this in detail in the higher classes but the topic remains this much only like you have to just take a thread just place it over the path and just stretch it and measure it on the scale so that's the process we follow for measuring the length of a curved line now motion like we were discussing about motion so motion is of four types basically we have to study here first is rectilinear motion next is circular third is rotational and fourth is periodic motion okay whenever i move in a straight line path my motion is termed as rectilinear motion whenever i move in a circular path my motion is known as circular motion very simple as simple as that so yeah that is the thing rectilinear and circular motion okay now what is rotational motion earth rotates on its own axis that's the rotation motion for example this is earth this is its axis and it rotates like this when an object rotates along its axis this is known as rotational motion i'll just explain it in the further slides in more detail then next is the periodic motion when the motion repeats for example a pendulum uh like if i talk about a pendulum a pendulum starts from here consider it to be starting from here and it just goes to this end then it comes back to this end this is known as periodic motion okay so that's the thing now we'll discuss these motions in detail now okay yeah next slide yeah so as i said whenever the objects move along a straight line their motion is termed as rectilinear motion right so like these are the soldiers moving they are marching ahead so they move in a straight line this is rectilinear motion then next is the circular motion if i talk about the wings of a fan the you know these blades of the fan they move in a circular path and this is known as a circular motion but now a thought would be coming in your mind isn't it rotational because this is just rotating about this axis yes you are right this is rotational as well but this is circular for a point on the blade this point is moving in a circular path when it will complete the path but if i talk about this entire fan as the reference it's in a rotational motion yes sir yeah did you know this yes if i just talk about a point on the blade of a fan or the wing of a fan this point is moving in a circular path but if i talk about the entire fan it is just rotating about its axis so it is in both rotational and circular motion similarly is earth doing rotational motion and earth uh, circular 
like earth is rotating about its axis it's doing the rotational motion but earth also revolves around the sun that is nothing but a circular motion right yeah so next is the periodic motion as i just gave you an example you know like this is the pendulum of a clock this pendulum just moves to and fro this path this is known as periodic motion a motion that repeats after some time is known as the periodic motion and like rotational as i just said earth rotates about its okay it's some issue uh, huh yes okay yes, time okay so you can leave no issues okay sir bye with okay take care bye goodbye bye, sir. okay so yeah like okay it's all right if anyone wants to leave can leave we'll continue uh it's i'll just take a moment to complete this topic uh it's like rotational motion something rotates about its own axis like earth rotates about its own axis that is the rotational motion yeah okay so that's all with the topic